Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're looking at a 1998 Dream PC featuring the Intel Pentium 2 450 and not one, but two 3DFX Voodoo 2 cards in SLI. Because we can, we're using quite a few modern parts. We've got the BitPhoenix Aurora case with tempered glass, RGB lighting and even a 120GB solid state drive. Guys, I'm not kidding you, in a lot of ways this is my most modern PC that I have. In this video I'll go over the parts, we take a closer look at the case, there are a ton of benchmarks and I filmed me playing some 1998 games with the RGB lighting in action, Unreal, Half-Life Thief, Drake and Starcraft and Incoming are featured in this video. Previously we built a 1997 retro PC with a Pentium 2 300 and Nvidia's River 128. So we will be using that PC as a comparison and find out just how much technology has actually improved within a year going from 1997 to 1998. I'm gonna put all the parts down below in the description. We've got an A Open AX6 BC motherboard, Pentium 2 450, 512 megabytes of RAM, a Matrox G200, two STB 3DFX Voodoo 2 cards in SLI, a Turtle Beach Oriel Vortex 2 sound card, a Promise SATA 300 TX2 Plus controller, a Blitz Wolf 120GB SATA SSD, and also a Corsair 350 watt power supply. Let's have a look at some DOS benchmarks. Throughout the video we're going to compare this machine with the 1997 build that we did previously. In 3D Bench we're getting 647 FPS, Chris's 3D Bench 442, PC Player Benchmark 148, in Doom we're getting 142 and in Quake 115. Checking out higher 640x480 resolution, we're getting 131 FPS in Chris's 3D Bench. The PC Player Benchmark runs at 56 FPS and Quake also at 56 FPS. To really showcase this machine and give it a modern touch, we're using the BitPhoenix Aurora case. The case has tempered glass and lots of space for large motherboards, graphics cards and also lots of cooling options. There are two removable drive cages at the top and the bottom to install four 3.5 inch drives. There's also a 2.5 inch drive bay with chroma lighting and there are two more 2.5 inch drive bays at the back of the motherboard tray. The case doesn't have any external drive bay so I used a USB flash drive and also a virtual CD emulation to install games and load stuff onto the machine. There are lots of cutouts for cable management. It comes with a 120mm rear fan, however you can install lots more fans. You can beef up the cooling by installing another 4 120 or 140mm fan throughout the case. Or you can even install two 280mm and a 120mm radiator at the back. The case comes with an RGB light controller. It's got two USB 2, two USB 3 and audio ports. There are also buttons for power, reset and changing the RGB color and there's a removable power supply dust filter. Things get a lot more interesting in Windows. This is where the two Voodoo cards in SLI really show what they can do. In the Final Reality Robots benchmark 64 FPS, in the City benchmark 87, in 3D Mark 99 a huge difference. Instead of 693 we're now getting 3758. In incoming, now we're looking at several resolutions. So I ran all the resolutions that the game supported and we can see up to 800 by 600, it maxes out at 94 FPS. But even at 1024 by 768, we're getting more than double the performance as the, compared to the machine from last year, which ran only at 640 by 480. We can see a similar trend in Tarok at both resolutions, 125 FPS. In Forsaken, 189, 163 at 800 by 600 and 109 at 1024 by 768. Expendable, this game is more CPU limited, we're getting pretty much 47 FPS at any given resolution. In Dracon, similar situation, 34, 35 and 32 FPS, also more than twice as fast as the 1997 time machine. In GL Quake we're seeing a bit more GPU scaling going on, starting off at 175, 172 for 800 by 600 and dropping down to 82 at 1024 by 768 which is still very smooth. And we can see a similar trend in Quake 2, starting off at 105 FPS, 97 and then 68 at 1024 by 768. 
For the lighting, we're using the Bitphoenix Alchemy 2 magnetic RGB LED strips. They are available in 30 and 60 mm and with or without RGB controller depending on what case you're using. The RGB controllers are compatible with certain motherboards which lets you use the motherboard software to access more colors and different patterns. Our retro motherboard of course doesn't know what to do with an RGB controller so we're using the button at the front and we can cycle 7 colors and there's also a brief mode. Now this is my first time using RGB LED strips. It was really easy to install with the magnets. You can just rearrange it quite easily and you just daisy chain them all together. All up I used two 30 centimeter and one larger 60 centimeter light strip in this project. I also had a look at power draw. At idle the entire system consumes 56 watts. So that's without the monitor. It's just the power draw straight off the uh, power supply. And under load running GLQuake at 1280 by 1024 we're getting 78 watts. So that is still quite efficient. So looking at these benchmark results it's really amazing performance. And the thing that amazed me personally was just how much of a boost you're getting within one year. So from 1997 to 1998 games that ran okay at 640x480 suddenly ran smooth at 1024x768. Now that's a performance boost we just don't see this anymore these days. And this is really what retro gaming is all about, revisiting these performance leaps and being able to purchase parts that were just out of reach. Back in the day, such a machine with two Voodoo cards in SLI would have cost an absolute fortune and most of us just couldn't afford it. I just want to talk a little bit about this build in general. This is one beautiful looking PC. In a way, this is my most uh, beautiful PC that I actually have. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the case moving forward. The case is very easy to work with. There's lots of space. In a way, the case is like a size too large for this motherboard, to be honest. Um, easy cable management. It's got lots of cutouts. The Pentium 2450 is a very capable CPU. The 100 megahertz FSB certainly helps. The Matrox G200, I highly recommend such a card for using uh, with Voodoo 2 cards because it's got really good VGA signal quality and the picture gets uh, passed through the Voodoo cards. And of course the Voodoo 2 cards in SLI are the highlight of this build. Amazing performance, a huge boost compared to the machine from 1997. I had a few issues as well. I used the Sound Blaster Live uh, initially but I couldn't get it to work so I went back to my go-to Windows 98 card which is the Vortex 2 and I also had some issues with the Promise SATA controller. It actually is not supported by Windows 98. There are no Windows 98 drivers so it runs in compatibility mode. However performance was still fine mostly because the solid state drive has zero access time and also because the machine has 512 megabytes of RAM so loading times were not a problem. It was also an interesting experience not having an optical drive. Now in today's world this is not a problem but with the Windows 98 retro gaming it can be a bit of an issue but I used Demon Tools, it's a virtual CD software and that worked fine and you can also use a USB flash drive in Windows 98 that made for some really easy uh, copying of files. And that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what you think. Uh, using a modern case, the RGB lights, is that a little bit too much or is that something that you can see yourself doing as well? As always, please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, like or dislike, share the video and like I said, leave me a comment down below. Anyway, I see you soon with another video.